So, who knows the story of this man? This is Khalid Saeed of Egypt. He was a man just like you and I, until one afternoon in June 2010, he was dragged out of an uh, internet cafe where he was by three policemen, dragged out of this internet cafe and beaten to death in full sight of those people around. His body was then taken to the local police station, stuffed with drugs, and dropped back where the incident had taken place. The autopsy by the official authorities said he had died of a drug overdose. His story, unfortunately, was not rare. It was not something that didn't happen relatively regularly in Egypt under Mubarak. His story of serious human rights violations was something we heard all, all too often. However, his story became what would be a spark to the revolutions that we've all seen over the last few years. And that is in part largely due to social media, in part due to the fact that his story was taken up and told to thousands and then to millions of people on different websites, in particular this one, Kulna Khalid Said. We are all Khalid Said, which became really one of the cries for revolution, for an end to this injustice. Because people saw that they were no longer alone facing this injustice. People saw that they could speak out, leading to this revolution. Who's this? This is Mohammed Bouazizi from Tunisia. Again, unknown, until one day he decided to do the unthinkable in the face of injustice and to light himself on fire. Dying only a few weeks later as a result of his injuries. This was after he had been insulted and um, in many ways treated very inhumanely by the authorities. And his story again was picked up. His story of individual tragedy in a sense, of individual injustice was picked up and spread throughout the internet and picking up this story and making people realize that they could speak out, that they could take action against these sorts of things, again, led to the fall of a dictator of 23 years in Tunisia. I think you know where I'm going with this. The individual story of this young boy, Hamza al-Khatib from Syria. He's only 13 years old. His story was like any others. He was going to school. But one day, he decided to join his father in a protest against Bashar al-Assad early in 2011. He was taken away from his father by the uh, security forces, again beaten to death, and his body mutilated was found in the street. These stories, unfortunately, happen every day in Syria, and we've seen it on the news now. At the time, no one spoke out, no one said anything until these stories started coming up on YouTube, on Facebook. And they really garnered uh, this, the viewings of so many people in the country, and people realized to what extent they also could speak up, and to what extent this injustice was not only their problem, but a problem that everyone faced, and that they could do something about it. Again, sparking a revolution. So, these individual stories, put together with social media, brought about incredible change in these countries. But let's take a step back. This was 10 years ago, long before all this happened. In 2003, this actually was in Sharm el-Sheikh. I think you recognize a few people who aren't so important anymore, and a few who might not be in a few years. At the time, 2003, Saddam Hussein was still in power. Tunisia, Egypt were thought of more as holiday destinations, places where the governments were moderate, places where people were treated relatively well, and the, bad, the baddies were definitely you know, the Taliban, Al-Qaeda, and these, but these were relatively moderate governments that did not violate human rights. People did not speak about those violations. And this is where Al-Qurama was created. Al-Qurama was really created to fill a gap of information, to 
gather individual cases of human rights violations like we've just seen and to make them known, not only to the public, but in particular to the United Nations mechanisms that were created to uh, protect the rights of all, in particular to these mechanisms, which at the time really had very few cases uh, of human rights violations from the Arab world. So al Karama really focused on the most serious violations of human rights, including torture, arbitrary detention, extrajudicial executions, and disappearances. And when we were informed of violations, we would take these inf this information and provide it to the United Nations with the aim that the United Nations, which would obviously have much more power towards governments to influence governments than a little NGO based in Geneva, with this information, the United Nations could act, could put pressure on the governments to end these violations, hopefully bringing about a, a bettering of the situation of the person or a release of those detained illegally. We also obviously tried to focus on these situations, trying to make them uh, not happen again, so trying to bring systemic change to these governments. However, things are changing now, and in the last few years we've been, uh, as Omar was saying, blessed with the opportunity to use so many different tools. Um, when we now sit down together to discuss what we're going to do, there's not just the UN there on the left, there's also the television, there's uh, Twitter, there's, and this is what I think is important to know. For example, here, we tweeted only a couple of months ago about one single case of uh, a young man who was detained for over eight years in Saudi Arabia without trial, without any information to his family as to why he was detained. For eight years, no information. Two days after we tweeted this, a simple tweet, his family called us back and said, we got a call from the authorities yesterday, they're going to try our son next week just from a tweet. This is something else. Obviously, you all recognize YouTube, but this is a five-minute program that we run every day on a satellite TV channel that goes into every home in the Arab world and which summarizes in five minutes the most important human rights violations that have occurred or information about human rights, be it reports or other things. This is aiming to bring individual stories to these people bringing the voices of human rights defenders in those countries out and back into the households because they are, they are stories that are not covered on Al Jazeera. They are stories that are not covered on any media except on the social media and through these sorts of initiatives. Therefore, when governments now have violated human rights, they have a whole range of pressures on them. You can see they have the letter from the United Nations, but they also have people speaking about the, those violations on the television. They have people speaking about it on Twitter, it going viral with videos. And this makes many more issues for these governments and makes it much more difficult or uncomfortable to violate human rights in the way they used to. We hope one day it will break the cycle. So what we really see is that these revolutions have brought about incredible change to the way that people speak about human rights violations in the Arab world. It has allowed people to realize that they are not alone, to realize that silence is no longer the way that they need to live um, when faced with this sort of injustice. And it has flipped the problem that al Karama originally found, which was that there was not enough information about human rights violations. It has flipped that to being an overload of information in many ways that there is so much information that we don't know what to do with it in many cases. However, it's interesting to, to remember that it's not quite over. There are many places in the Arab world where there are still many violations and where there are still many problems, and we don't speak about them. What do you think of when I say the Gulf states, when I say United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia? Probably you think Dubai, probably you think Riyadh, you know, wealthy, well-to-do countries coming into the global uh, markets. Well, 
This is Dr. Mohammed Rokan from uh, the United Arab Emirates. He is a human rights lawyer. He has worked for decades defending people from all sides of the political spectrum when their rights are attacked. He was critical for many years of the lack of political rights in the United Arab Emirates. But only recently, in view of the changes throughout the, the region, has he started being more vocal. And this led to his arrest on the 17th of July, 2012. And he is now detained in isolation in an unknown location. Saudi Arabia, Saud al-Hashimi, he is a political rights activist, a poet and a, a, a thinker well known within his country and in the region. And he's a reformist. He's one of the group of people who have been calling for a constitution for the country, for there to be real political rights for the people. He, too, was arrested, but much earlier, in, three, in 2007, and was detained for four years without any trial. Four years without anyone telling him what law he had broken and why he was detained there. Then, in 2011, after the United Nations had um, adopted an opinion calling for his release, he was sentenced to 30 years in jail. These are the sorts of things that we see every day in this region, but we don't see it on the, the normal news. We don't see it in, in any normal uh, media, and this is why the social media is a place that we can get this sort of information. These two, uh, these two human rights defenders are in fact the 2012 laureates of al Karama's award, which honors the, the struggle of certain human rights defenders, because we believe that these stories need to be told. And we are going to try and uh, tell these stories in a bit more depth this Friday, 7th of December. We really believe that these sorts of stories need to be told and need to be spread. And what we're really happy about is that these sorts of initiatives come up because it is exactly that that is needed. It is exactly the need to get informed for you to use social media in the way that so many in the Arab world have, and so many here continue to, but to follow those activists, follow the journalists, get informed about what's going on, and spread the word. Spread these stories, converse with the activists, speak with the people in the, in the Middle East who are actually uh, realizing these changes not just going through the normal media, but get, get an idea yourself. Learn from them. It doesn't, we're not going to be teaching lessons. They are the ones who know. And raise awareness here of all of these injustices. And these sorts of platforms are essential for this. So we're really, really happy to be participating in this. Thank you very much.